Hey everyone, welcome back. In this ISTQB exam question and answer video, I'm going to cover another five exam questions with details which will help you to understand the question, how to solve it in the ISTQB foundation exam. So question number first of this particular video or 31st altogether of this particular exam set says, you want to estimate the test effort for the new project using estimation based on ratios. Okay. You calculate the test to development effort ratio using average data for both development effort and test effort from four historical projects similar to the new one. The table shows this historical data. Okay. So now what they are saying is you want to estimate based on the ratio from the and, and historically you have to check four projects that are shown here. Okay. And based on that, what they are asking is this is the historical data. Then they are asking the estimated development effort for new project is $800,000. Okay. What is the your estimate of the of test effort in this project? Okay. So test effort is what they are asking. So development effort is 800,000 and they are asking test effort based on four historical project data. Okay. Now when you have to rely on calculation of or basically the ratio based and you have you want to calculate the historical data. First thing is what we have to do is we have to see what ratio. So we have to average out the development effort and test test effort and then see the test to development dollar ratio and based on that for a new project will come up with the numbers. Okay. So if we add up this development effort, so this is 1 million, 2 million, this is uh, 1 million, 200,000. Okay. So 2 million. And then this is another 800,000, 200,000, which is 3 million and then 600,000. So 303 million and 600,000. Right. So that's the, that's the number for a development. Okay. So this is the development dollars for average. If we average out, basically, if we add up the all previous four projects. Okay. Now we talk about the test effort. So 130 plus 70, 200. Okay. And then 100, 300 and then 40 plus 20, 360. Okay. So this is basically coming out as $360,000. Okay. So $360,000. So if we talk about the ratio of dollar of test to development effort, so it comes to $360,000 test effort and then 3,600,000 as a development effort. Okay. So which comes to, so if we just cross this out, so this comes to as 36, 1 and then 10, 1 is to 10, right? So basically, or we can say 10 is to 1, right? So if the spend on development is $10, the spend on test is $1, right? In terms of ratio from past historical data of the four projects. Okay. So now what they are saying is now based on this, based on this previous historical estimate, we have calculated the ratio. Now, if the development effort was $800,000, okay. So what is the test effort? So development effort is 800,000. So basically, if we simply want to calculate the test effort, so that will be the one tenth, right? So basically, if we talk about the test effort, that will be just one part, one tenth of whatever the development effort is, right? So if we say one tenth of $800,000, okay? So that comes as $80,000. Okay. So the correct answer is B, which is $80,000. Okay. So this is how you are going to solve these estimation questions if they are based on ratio and you have to calculate based on historical data, simple mathematics. Okay. So this is basically the correct answer $80,000 for this particular question. Now moving to the next one, you are testing a web application that allows user to search for products, view product details, add products to shopping cart and place order. Okay. Pretty obvious search, view, add to shopping cart and place order. Okay. Sequentially, absolutely fine. You have prepared the following seven test cases, all of which you want to execute. Okay. All of these you want to execute. The test should be executed in the best order based on the test priority. Now here you have to remember they need to be executed in best order and based on the test priority. Okay. So highest test priority should be executed first, then the next one. Okay. And then there will be a dependency. If there is a dependency, then you have to cater for that dependency as well. So basically in the below section, you will see you also identified the following logical dependencies between test cases. Search functionality must be tested before view functionality can be tested. View must be tested before add and add functionality 
quality must be tested before order obviously co correctly makes sense any e-commerce website you can you should be able to search right and then once you search then you view the product then once you view the product you can then add the functionality after adding you can then order right so this is the basic logical dependencies that you have to also cater for w then they are asking the actual question is which test case should be executed as the fourth one okay now let's see how the sequence will be of the execution okay so let's go to through the priority so as per the priority the test case 6 should be executed first okay highest priority but can we execute it first let's say add product okay add product b to shopping cart add product has dependency on order right uh, sorry uh, add product has dependency on view functionality first first you have to view okay so view functionality must be tested before add so that means even though the this is higher priority still you have to first test any of the view functionality right but before we go to the view right so we have view priority view functionality here now in the view as well we have product a and product b now product b has higher priority so that means we'll go ahead with product b in this particular case okay but before that let's see view is also dependent on search functionality must be tested on tested before view functionality can be tested so that means we can not even test view functionality the, we have to start with the search functionality okay so now if we go to the search functionality that means we have to start with either test case one or two here the priority is same for both so which one to start with can we start with a or b we can choose anyone right here now the confusion is now to solve this confusion we have to rely on the view functionality right now view functionality product b has the higher priority okay so we'll start with the tc2 first which is search for product b because product b view has the higher priority over product a view details okay so we'll start with tc2 okay which is search for product B. Then we'll go to the view because first we have to search, then view is dependent on search. So we searched for the product B, then we view product details, which is TC4. Then because TC4 or product B has the higher priority, that's why we chose search product B because both were same. So we had to come to this next one. Now we viewed the product, then we will go ahead and add the product B to the cart, right? Which is priority one. So absolutely fine. So that means this test case six. Okay. Okay, that's the third test case what they are asking which test case should be executed as the fourth one out of this now once we have added this product B to the shopping cart right that's priority one can we straight away go ahead and place an order that's priority five okay now priority five there are still high priority test cases out there now straight away you you should be thinking okay we can now go ahead and place an order and test case seven is the correct answer that's a trick okay because we have to also consider the priority in this particular case 5 is less priority as compared to search and others okay so now we came here now we came here adding product B to the shop, shopping cart okay so we have executed TC4 TC5 uh, TC6 and then we have executed TC2 three of these right now we'll go to the next product okay so now because add is dependent on view view is dependent on search so we'll go search product A now okay so we'll go with the search product A so that will make it TC1 why because we can't go to place order because we have high priority test case 1 which is priority 4 that needs to be executed first which because search has higher priority over placing an order and why we are executing search before this high priority view and add because add is dependent on view and view is dependent on search so first we have to search then we'll go ahead and do the view product a so which will be tc3 okay then we view product details and then add product A to shopping cart which is again priority 3 so this is TC5 and then finally add or place an order which is TC7 so with this sequence what is the fourth test case that will be executed so TC2 TC4 TC6 TC1 is the fourth test case that will be executed so the correct answer is B and we just have to select one option here okay so you can imagine these questions can become really tricky if you don't pay attention that you have to consider multiple factors to solve these sort of questions okay so that's the next question now moving to the third question of this particular video according to the testing quadrants model which of the following 
falls into quadrant one technology facing and support team and and support the team so this these type of questions are simple and easy as far as you remember testing quadrants model okay so now q in the q1 in the testing agile testing quad uh, quadrant q1 the correct option is basically component integration testing okay and i'll let me draw this quadrant so you are able to understand so basically agile testing quadrants if you will go through the videos that i have posted for the agile course will be something like this this is q1 q2 q3 and q4 okay so here this is tech facing all right this is all these testing is more of a business facing all right and this is critique product and this is supporting team all right so here basically here you'll see that component testing or unit testing comes in here functional comes here if you talk about functional this is functional testing helps more for the business functionality how it should be but if you talk about low level testing which is unit testing component testing all of that is more of a tech facing and helps or supports the team now functional testing is a business facing as well but also supports the development and testing if we talk about the q3 right which is more so for example exploratory exploratory testing uh user acceptance testing so this is again business and then it critiques the product how whether the product or the test application or basically the web application or app that you are testing whether it fulfills or meets the user uh, end user needs or not and then q4 is again more of a tech facing which is say for example uh performance security and all of those right so that's where that's how these quadrants are in uh the test in as agile testing quadrant and once you understand these and what testing falls in where then you will be able to answer and now we know that in q1 basically which is more of a support the team that you will see that q1 supports the team and then is a technology facing right so it's just component integration testing because if you check other all of those they are in different quadrants okay so that's the third question of this particular video moving to the fourth one now given the fourth question says given the following risks in a in effect loop implementation causes long system responses consumers change their preferences flooding of the server room patients uh, above a certain age receive inaccurate reports and the following mitigation activities risk as acceptance performance testing using boundary value analysis as a test technique and risk transfer now based on these risks and mitigation activities we have to map these risks with the correct mitigation activities and then we have to go ahead and choose the answer okay so now if we go ahead and simply say for example if we high level let's find the one that so usually if say for example you get these options you first figure out which one is the most known to you and you are confident that you will be able to map that correctly okay that way you will be able to eliminate couple of options from here okay so let's say patients above a certain age receive inaccurate report okay so now this is something which is more of a functional sort of issue okay so it could be rectified by doing proper testing right first one if we talk about ineffective loop implementation causes long system responses long system responses right so this is performance okay easily we can see long system re responses so we can easily say one is map to b performance testing right we can mitigate these sort of issues with performance with proper performance testing detailed performance testing right so we can say one is map to b right now you can see as soon as we mapped one to b i'm 100% sure that this is long system responses can be rectified by performing better coverage in the performance area we can now eliminate a and d right because with one b option there are only two options which is b and c okay now with the fourth one you will see okay with the fourth one you will see that i checked the fourth patients of a certain age the option that is mapping is using boundary value analysis as a test technique so doing a little bit comprehensive testing in that particular case so for c in both cases as well right so now we were not able to conclude the answer because in both cases in both these two options we have to both the options were same so now we have to come to 2 and 3 and then come up with the correct option now here you will see that third one flooding of the server room right flooding of the server room not every risk you can go ahead and do the mitigation activity basically you can't accept or you can't just ignore right so if the server is flooded okay what can we do should we accept it or should we transfer 
transfer it right so flooding of the server room should be mostly transferred to third party taking proper insurance and all if we talk about consumers change their preferences we don't have any control on it later consumer changes change the preferences we just accept it right that if consumer changes their preferences that's absolutely fine we accept these sort of risks because we don't have control over it flooding of the server room is something which we can we don't have control right but or we can't do anything for that but at least we can transfer that particular risk to someone else so if something happens we get compensated compensated for it right so for three d is the correct option Option and for two a is the correct op option so with this what is the correct option overall for this question c is the correct option b is not correct okay so for fourth question b is the correct option and that's how you are going to navigate and find the correct answer for these sort of questions okay now moving to the last question of this particular video which of the following is a product quality metric okay which of the following is product quality metric now we have to simply this is a simple one we just have to go through these four options select one option mean time to failure number of defects found requirement coverage defect detection percentage easily you can figure out if we talk about i'm not going with the first one number of defects found is this a product quality metric no this is more around the defect right number of defect found is more of defect metric requirements coverage is again you know within testing it's more of a coverage of the requirement with the test case defect detection percentage is again also a defect metric okay so the only product quality metric when we say product quality metric it's more of critiquing the product as such about the product quality so mean time to failure is the product quality metric okay so all three are the wrong option correct one is a mean time to okay so that's all for this particular video in which i have covered five exam questions with detailed explanation in the next one i'll cover remaining five questions of this particular sample exam set thank you see you in the next one